Okay guys, I'm really excited for today's video. We're finally doing the video on IPC Hammer. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with it from the channel, I've talked about it a couple of times, but haven't shown it yet. Uh, it's something that Mike B, a viewer of the channel, member of the Facebook group, uh, wrote up himself. He uh, he took uh, PCM Hammer, uh, which is open source software for programming uh, GM PCMs from like 2000, uh, from 1999 to like 2007. Uh, he, he took that software and ported it over to work with the instrument cluster. So we can now program the microcontrollers on the instrument clusters over the class two serial bus. So you can plug into the OBD two port and program it. Um, so really cool, really cool stuff. Really excited about it. Uh, one thing to mention before we get into doing the video on this is this software is still kind of experimental, you know, in, in progress software. I highly recommend before you start programming with it, get familiar with programming it over UART straight to the microcontroller and the bootstrap loader. Uh, the reason why you want to be able to do that is because if you brick it over OBD2, uh, you, you're not going to be able to program it over OBD2 anymore. So you need to come in with the bootstrap loader and put firmware on it again. So definitely, uh, this is a really, really good tool to know how to do before you get into this. So that way, that way, if you do make mistakes, you're not, you know, upset because it's it's very easy to recover from. If you if you brick it like that, it's not broken. You just need to put it into Bootstrap Loader, and you can load your your firmware. So that's going to be kind of the initial waiver here in the beginning. Is the software still experimental, still still in progress? Uh, so uh, and there's no warranty offered with it. So if you screw your stuff up, that's on you. Um, so yeah, don't 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 brick your instrument cluster without knowing how to recover from a brick, which, uh, I mean, I'm holding up this serial adapter. If your, if your computer has a serial port, you don't even need this. So, you know, it, this is just a, a UART adapter I'm holding in my hand. It's not a special tool. Any, any UART adapter should work. Um, but yeah, let's get into the video now. Let's go take a look at, uh, IPC hammer and, uh, get it installed on the computer and then we can, uh, get, We'll lay out all the tools, see what tools we need, and, and actually get started on this. Okay, so if you're already a member of the Facebook group, uh, you just go in the Facebook group and you'll see his post here um, on it, and there's the link there. I'll also have the link down in the description of the um, of the video, so that way you can just click the link to his GitHub. Uh, and this brings you to the main page of, of the IPC Hammer port, which gives you the source code, so that way if you want to edit it and do whatever, uh, you can, and especially if you want to contribute and, you know, do, do a git push to him, uh, I'm sure he would accept that. Um, but then if you're like me and you just want to use it and you are useless when it comes to programming like this, because <laughs> I am, I'm totally useless like this, um, just go ahead and click releases and you'll see the latest um, latest release right there. So uh, download the, the zip file. I'm going to go ahead and download that. All right, so we, we downloaded it. Now we need to uh, go ahead and do an uh, extract Oops. Uh, do it. Extract all. We'll just go ahead and extract that. All right. Open it up. IPC hammer and more information. Run anyways. So now we have it opened up. So this is this is what IPC hammer looks like. Super easy to get. There's no installer that you're gonna run here. Um, you just open it up and it it, it works. So. Then you gotta go in and initialize your device. Well, select your device. I don't have one plugged in, so I can't do it. Uh, but you need to either have a OBD link, a ATV um, tool. I don't know if the OBD X pros are supported uh, in here. The OBD X pros are supported in PCM Hammer. Um, so I would assume they probably work, but I don't have one to test. I don't think Mike has one to test. Uh, the OBD X pro, that is the tool that Pete uh, Sontag, or I think that's how you say his last name. He did pre he did all the work for LS Droid. Um, per from my understanding. He does have a Australian counterpart that helps him do that stuff. Uh, so not not sure exactly how how all of that works with Pete stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm not completely in the loop there, but yeah, I know that. I, I kind of I hope that OBD X Pro works with this. If anybody has one, please test and see. Um, because I, I'd like to support him because, you know, that's kind of a 
you know, small entrepreneur trying to, to make money and, and do his own thing. And, and I'm all about that stuff. Uh, you know, if you have a, if you have a product you want to design and put it out, I think it's a great thing to try to help people get, get that stuff out to market. So, uh, hopefully it does work with this. And if anyone has one to test, uh, that, that'd be great. Uh, and just report back, let us know if it works or not. Uh, but yeah, the OBD link, uh, is what I use. That's what I have. And I know, uh, Mike with his stuff, he's been doing it with a AVT, uh, tool. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, get started working with this. Okay. So let's real quick, go over what you need to, to be able to do this. So you're going to need, uh, one of the supported dongles. Uh, I'm using the OBD link LX. Um, I've just, I've had it for a while. It works good for me. Uh, my computer does not have a Bluetooth port, so I need a Bluetooth dongle. Uh, and one of these little cheap ones works just fine. And then I, I highly recommend you have some sort of uh, serial adapter so that way if you do brick it, you can recover from that, as mentioned before. Um, and then you need a way to attach this to your instrument cluster. You can easily uh, just wire it up directly to one of the clips if you want to. Um, so you would just go into the class two port on there. So, you know, you need your, your powers, your ground, your ground needs to be tied to this and your power needs to be tied to this. And then the gray pin here uh, is your data pin and you just hook it up into the data pin on there uh, if you want to do it that way. The easier way, uh, I've shown this before on the channel. Um, this comes from, uh, from his, this, here you go. So his, um, his little box here, uh, it makes, uh, makes a little pass through. So we can just use this. We'll just plug it into the cluster and plug our dongle in. So dongle goes into the OBD2 port here on it. And then this goes into the instrument cluster and I just plug into the power supply. So that's what I'm gonna, so that's what I'll be using in this video to, to do this. So we'll uh, go ahead and plug that in there. And let's uh, power up this instrument cluster real quick and see if it works. Let me grab the other end of this. Uh, I use it with my bench power supply so i have to plug this guy in and then this goes into my bench power supply and 14 volts so this one works let me get this cover off because y'all can't read it and what i'm gonna do is just put steering wheel controls on it so yeah this one needs some work it's a old tired one there uh, no steering wheel controls at the moment okay so as you can see we have the eprom programmer out uh, you should not need this but this circuit board that I'm working with, somebody's messed with it before. The um, odometer was definitely not accurate on there. It was like 79,000 miles on it. And this is like a super ragged out uh, instrument cluster. So clearly somebody had messed with the EEPROM before. Uh, I actually couldn't see any signs of solder work on there. So not sure how they programmed it. If they just used one of those uh, like OB, uh, the OBD stars or whatever uh, to try to program it. But for some reason, the key got changed when they did it. So the, the key should have been 2 Bravo, 0 Bravo, Foxtrot 3, 7 Bravo. Um, that's what it should have been. And so you can see here it trying to send the key and it not unlocking it. So uh, we've changed the key to the correct key. It was like 3 Foxtrot uh, there again uh, or something. I, I don't know. It was It was definitely wrong. So... Uh, Mike, Mike helped me out. I sent him an email, uh, and we fixed that. So there we go. Let's, uh, go ahead and program that and put it back on the board. All right, let's go ahead and open up IPC Hammer now that we're done fixing the EEPROM that somebody had messed with. All right, so we're going to write a calibration to it. So, yep, we know that this software is not reliable and we should know how to um, um, f correct this ourselves. So to, to go in and do BSL uh, and then you'll be able to work, make it work again. So, uh, yep, won't cause any difficulty for us if this happens. Um, let's go. Yeah. And I'm in the wrong folder here. This is actually a folder I had for the other version. Let's go in here. Release. Uh, for truck five and five. All right, let's see. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click open, click continue, and let's see if it's able to write it. And we are currently writing it.
Okay, so we did successfully write it. Um, the the one that I chose is not a steering wheel control and driver one, driver two, but I believe this one does still have steering wheel controls on it. It's just not driver one, driver two. If not, it's diesel. I, I really can't remember the bins. I, I wish uh, I had a table that listed what they all do. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We did successfully write to it. We could tell because it shut off, did the thing. Uh, I'm getting, going to figure out which one of these is actually uh, steering wheel controls just so we have visual effect for the video that, that that is steering wheel controls on there. Okay, well, you guys probably can't see it on the board, but you can definitely see it on the screen. Um, yeah, I, I, I messed up. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to recover with Minimon. So like I said, you want to make sure you do that. Um, I, I kind of intentionally messed up. It was like semi-intentional. Uh, Mike said, hey, don't do this. And I was like, well, I want to see what happens if I do this. Um, when you go in and you're programming these and you and you pick your files, you need to make sure you're picking the right files for your operating system you're using. So if I, I was just curious what happens if I load a calibration for a different operating system, just see what happened. Uh, and it just makes it kind of seize up. I should have recorded it. Um, I didn't because I, I, I knew it wasn't going to work, uh, but I wasn't sure how bad it wasn't going to work. Um, so yeah, I, I recovered with uh, Minimon. So uh, now we're hooked up here. Oh, uh, you got got to turn this thing on first. That way, this is powered up. All right, let's try again. All right, so for the right OS, uh, it, it may not go exactly how you think it goes. So for writing the operating system, so the operating system is the 96 uh, kilobyte file, and the uh, calibrations are 16 kilobit files. So this the software already knows which. OS to put with the different um, calibrations. So you're not actually picking the OS here. If you pick the OS, it's just going to crash. Um, so you got to go and uh, pick the correct um, uh, calibration that you want, uh, which uh, let me just go ahead and put that in there. Yep, that one. And we're going to go ahead and just say continue. And now we are writing to it. So it's going to go through the process of writing it. It does take a little bit longer to write the operating system than it does to write the calibration. Uh, but it's still faster than Minimon is. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's definitely a whole lot quicker uh, and easier to do. And this tool is uh, is like 10 times slower than the tool that Mike uses uh, that he, he's got. So... Uh, he had to slow down the request time on here because it, it would ping it too fast and this thing couldn't keep up with it. Uh, so he had to slow slow it down about, uh, t I think it was like 10 times slower than it was originally. Uh, so it, it even has the potential to be faster than it is right now uh, if, if you weren't using uh, this tool. Uh, I, I think he slowed down the whole program for it to do that. Uh, another thing I... I might change if I was running the show here is I'd change the name of the right OS plus calibration thing um, or just change the way uh, the right OS and uh, right IPC calculate. Make it all just one button and it just automatically verifies if it has the right thing because we, you know, you have the read properties feature and it tells you what operating systems on there. So you could read the properties, go, okay, this is what operating systems on here. It has the correct operating system for this um, calibration you're trying to write so I'm just gonna write just a calibration or it goes nope it has the wrong um, uh, uh, wrong operating system do you want to override and still write only the um, the calibration or let's um, do that it's just a bunch of a bunch of if-then statements in, in the programming there um, uh, going on uh, the, the uh, I, w I would probably do myself just to simplify it. and we know that Mike's going to be working on some more to it because we definitely have the modify options uh, looks like it's still got some work to go there all right and there we go see we're already done writing it so this is a whole lot faster than the 20 minutes it takes to write it in Minimon uh, but I'm sure I could get a little faster in Minimon if I turn up the baud rate but uh, I, don't know. I, I already have write problems with Minimon so I, I don't turn it up any faster uh, so yeah Definitely uh, pretty quick there, and you saw it said unknown driver, so uh, we got the the right one going on there. Um, so yeah, I mean that really that's that's really it for PC, 
PC or I <laughs> PC and hammer. I, I, I PC hammer. Uh, somebody should make a, a logo for Mike and send him a little instrument cluster logo to to replace the the little PCM on there uh, with a with an instrument cluster instead. Uh, but yeah, the. That's really all I have for this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching it. I really, really appreciate Mike making this. This is like super cool. Um, this this is gonna make everybody who does instrument cluster works life easier because uh, you you know now you get calls from people and say, hey, I want this this new opera. Uh, you know, I want steering wheel controls on here. Um, and you go, oh, I can't afford to, to pay this service fee to, to use this particular software. Um, nudge, nudge, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, so you're gonna, you're gonna use this instead and it's gonna save you money and you're gonna, you're gonna make more money. So since you're gonna make more money, you really ought to donate a little bit of money, you know, you know, consider donating that, what you would have paid for, um, uh, that subscription to that particular software, you know, give, give, give them a little donation there. Um, <laughs> yeah, give them, give them that $2,000. Uh, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, it, it is, um, it, it is a very useful piece of software. And I think, uh, when you combine the, how, the knowledge of how to use this software with the knowledge of how to recover from, I, I keep calling it a brick, but it's really a soft brick, like a hard brick. You would never be able to recover from a soft brick. It's just like the software is messed up and it won't respond. Um, so, you know, just knowing how to recover from a soft brick, if you do that, uh, you know, with those two coupled together, these microcontrollers are just, you know, they're completely defeated. There's, they, they hold no more secrets. Uh, yeah, you know, there's no checksum in there, so if, if you guys want to start writing your own operating systems for it, that's it's completely possible to do. Um, so you know, it the the sky is the limit, I guess, uh, on that. It just um, I don't know how how much effort you want to put into doing that. I, I don't think uh, I'll be putting any effort into you know reverse engineering the operating system and writing my own. Uh, but it. it it's really cool and and i'm really happy to be here so um yeah, i hope you guys enjoyed the video and please join the facebook group it's going to be down in the description uh and consider donating some money to mike for his really hard work on this project uh his paypal link will be uh down at the bottom uh so yeah i'll uh, see you guys in the next video